Meow. Hi, I'm Bobby. I am a robot cat. Today, let us review the arrest warrant for Brian Laundry. In good humor, and blatantly obvious contrast, I present to you Catherine Joy, the self-taught, cannot remember the day of the week, never investigated anything, journalist. On the right, we have former prosecuting district attorney, badass lawyer, and legal commentator, Emily D. Baker. Let's see how this plays out. I'm so glad to have you here. And I am happy to uh, be here tonight. I hope you guys had a good day. You are as charismatic as the hair on a horse's ass, Uncle Fester. Try appreciating your viewers. 23rd, did you know that yesterday I kept saying that it was September 21st? Like, why would I, I can keep saying all day why. yesterday that it was September 21st? Turn off my camera for a second. My nose keeps itching. Okay. Um, we have, um, oh, um, some people have been asking Are about my hair. Now? I honestly just tried to part on my different, I tried to part it on a different side. And do you ever just like try a different side to part your hair and you're like, no, I've been parting my hair on the wrong side my whole life. We've got some fresh hair. We've got a fresh iPhone. It's just, it's time to roll. Are you guys, are you guys ready? It's more than likely they were told yesterday about an indictment that came down because the indictment actually was down yesterday and they announced the charges today. So are you sure you are not confusing the warrant with the press release? Or perhaps you have not read these documents before speeding onto the internet to give the scoop. And then this afternoon, the indictment came down. Which so day do you mean? The FBI out of Denver released this news statement, which says, that on Wednesday, September 22nd of 2021, so they did this yesterday, this is why they knew about it ahead of time. What on earth? Authorization. He wasn't on the bank account, he isn't on the bank account, it's not named in his name. There'd be no other way to tie it to Gabby if it was anybody else. So that's- The arrest warrant real quick, it is a very basic arrest warrant. And again, the arrest warrant has the 18 USC 1029A1, use of unauthorized devices. And in this, it's a 1029A2. Again, that's not going to invalidate the arrest warrant. They might file for a updated or superseding and arrest warrant. The indictment is enough to arrest. So having the wrong, um, the wrong charge on it's not going to be th the end of the thing. Anytime you use a bank card, it is interstate commerce. Correct. So anything that you do over a wire, over a interstate, that's the federal law. So this is a federal case. Okay. Defendant Brian Christopher Laundry knowingly and with intent to defraud used one or more unauthorized access devices, the device being the Capital One Bank debit card with the last four, a personal identification number, so a PIN, um, for bank accounts, and then it gave the bank account numbers. And by Thank such you conduct, for clarifying. things of value, generally money in this case, to $1,000 or more during that period, which affected interstate commerce. That's the jurisdictional part of this. Um, and the... Value aggregating a thousand is probably the charging, and I didn't pull up the charging guidelines, but probably the charging guidelines for this to be a felony. It is in violation of 18 USC 1029A2 and section C1A1. <laughs> okay. And they are doing it this way because it's going to end up being a federal, a full federal case when it what finally gets to the level of what are you doing? What it needs to be. So that means that. This is not a warrant, and I've seen confusion about this. This is not a warrant related to her passing or him being a suspect in her murder. This is a warrant for the use of a debit card. It's generally a holding charge, so it is going to be um, something that they can arrest him on, search him on, interview him on, bring him into custody on, keep him in custody on, seeing that he's been missing for over a week and a half. Put the put the you know ankle bracelet on him if he's released to track him. This gives them something to go on while they continue to investigate, which means they don't have to rush the investigation. They don't have to rush the um, the autopsy and things like that. So. But without this warrant, the FBI doesn't have any compelling reason to 
put out a wanted poster because he's not technically wanted for a crime if they don't have a warrant. And they can now connect him to her passing and say, well, after she was gone, he was using her credit card. Very brief. It's very brief. From on or about August 30th, 2021, through and including on or about September 1st, things are always pled on or about because sometimes by the time you get to trial, um, witnesses or dates can vary. There can be fluctuations. So it's always on or about. If you just put on and then it's proven to not be on that exact date, you can lose your entire case because it's not pled properly. That's pretty suspicious, right? So she's not alive anymore and he is accessing her bank accounts and he's using her bank accounts without her permission and defrauding her and the banks. Do you just sit awake at night and design your law degree in Money. your head? Now, my speculation and the wide speculation is this is likely Gabby Petito's card um, and her debit card accessing her bank accounts. The indictment does not say that. The so... I'm guessing that a lot of the stuff that they had over that time was in Gabby's name. And just like the bank, like just like the car, the band was in her name. I'm actually surprised they didn't um, charge him with Grand Theft Auto. That could have been another charge because he's driving her car and it's not his car. It's not. You need to call whoever the holy hell made deputy dipshit and get your money back. Registered in his name. Technically, he stole her car too. Well, we are just adding charges ourselves now. Call the Federal Bureau of Investigation and let them know. That they took camping with has been in their driveway. Okay. Um, I think the dates that they're doing this are to pinpoint a date and time when they believe that Gabby wasn't alive anymore. So maybe they can't for sure say that she was not alive on the 28th. Again, they likely have a date of death that is in that time frame before September 1st. That would have been presented to the grand jury. Um, and then they talk about the warrant. Well, this warrant allows law enforcement to arrest Laundry. The FBI and our partners across the country continue to investigate the facts and circumstances of Ms. Petito's Look homicide. Look at this. It doesn't say that he used it in Wyoming. It says that he used it in Wyoming. in Wyoming and other places. It doesn't say that he used it in Wyoming. It says that he used it. He used the fucking charge card in Wyoming. In, in, Wyoming. in Wyoming and other places. In Wyoming and other places. Using it in multiple states would also become a federal case as well. Sure that that is the date that they're thinking of. So from on or about August 30th to um, and including on or about September 1st in the District of Wyoming and elsewhere, which means this could have started in Wyoming. There could be other jurisdictions. Defendant Brian Christopher Laundry. When you have more than one case and like state involved, it becomes that. So it's not a huge charge and it doesn't carry a high penalty, but it's enough to get an arrest warrant, which is what they needed. They just needed the minimum. This will probably be the first of many. I know there is um, a lot of information out there around this case. Not all of it's accurate. Not all of it's confirmed. I know it is difficult. And we really do try to make sure that we um, remember that you are innocent until proven guilty, no matter how much we fucking hate it. And um, the Petito family is going through the most awful thing you can imagine. Um, and it's a lot for her family, so I'm not going to. When there's new info that I can help, um, I will cover it. In this case, I'm not going to go live every time there's something new. It it just doesn't sit right with me to dissect it like that. And I know people are curious, and I will try to uh, I will try to keep up to date on new solid new developments and new information. This is Katie from Without Yourself. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a good day. Who has been sucked into the missing persons case of Gabby Patino? So, um, the FBI has said that they have found a body that is consistent with the physical description of Gabby Petito. Verified uh, sighting, uh, sightings of Brian in Mobile, uh, right outside of a Walmart. There is a fish up the autopsy, and they have 
excuse me, they have uh, performed all of that, they have a uh, COD, and also have properly identified it as Gabby. And so many people coming forward with their accounts of what happened if they saw Gabby and Brian. Hi guys. Interesting day, um, it started out kind of confusing. We um, started getting word that Brian's parents were seen driving YouTube. And I don't even know that it's fair to call her a YouTuber because I only saw one video of hers on YouTube. I don't know if they deleted any of those things. Um, she's basically trying to aspire to be a YouTuber, which is fantastic. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. This cat is always prowling.